Welcome back. Now, yesterday marks the start of Asthma Awareness Week, and it's especially worrying time for the 380,000 Irish people living with the condition during this COVID-19 crisis. And getting behind the event and the 10 million steps for asthma virtual fundraiser is one of the greatest footballers of all time. Winner of five All-Irelands, nine Munster titles and Footballer of the Year in 2004. Kerry legend Tomás O'Shea is joining us this morning. Good morning, Tomás. Morning, Tomás. Hi. Nice. Hi, lads. How are you getting on? Yeah, good. And how are you? How are the family? Oh, very good, very good. It's strange times. We're trying to get used to everything. We're trying to get used to doing schoolwork at home. We're trying to get used to not moving around, not socialising, not mixing. And we're getting into a routine. But I think we got a bit of positivity yesterday. So yeah. we're, we're good, we're good. Well, there's light at the end of the tunnel, please, God, Tomás. Tell us a little bit about why and how you got involved with this campaign, Tomás. Well, I got involved. My, my stepdaughter, Ava, has asthma and uh, she's had it bad enough in the last few years yeah. and I was just um, you know she, she's had situations where she would have had to go to hospital and get on a nebulizer a few times and we were on a holiday and it happened and I suppose her, her social life has been affected by it you know and, and just the simple things of going out playing with her friends and I, I it wasn't that that um, I was going on ranting and raving about it I just got involved in something on social, socially online and I was contacted by the Asthma Society of Ireland see what I'd like to get involved and is there anything you can do, you can do because yeah. even in the times that we have lads with the COVID-19 and all that and respiratory situations, you would be worried. There's over 380,000 people in Ireland with asthma and it is a worry for them and, you know, the Asthma Society of Ireland are inundated with, with calls and, and you know, um, people asking and wondering, are they in danger? And, and, you know, they are, but as long as we're safe and keep staying safe, then, then we'll be okay. OK, now the campaign then, the 10... I was going to say 1,000, it's not 10,000. 10 million steps, how, how does that work? Yeah. yeah, well, I suppose everybody, every um, organisation, you know, they can't uh, gather money the way they normally gather money, you know, and they have to go online, they have to come up with ideas. So they're coming up with the idea of 10 million steps. So basically, if you can do 10,000 steps a day, OK, and if you can actually just donate 10 euro, and you can do it any way you want. You can dance, you can run, you can walk, you can do it up and down your stairs. But I mean, the amount of people that are ringing, they need to man these telephone lines that people are calling in for asthma. So they need to, to, to gather the money and they're trying to if they add up all the steps and it's online it's on social media facebook instagram twitter everything like that and you can go in and the www.asthma.ie all the information is there how to donate how to give the 10 euro and they want everybody if they record it that it'll come up with 10 million steps and obviously in the time that we're in lads the, the exercise, we're all doing it anyway, so yeah. we might as well give it to a, 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 something that we can help people that are struggling at the time with, you know? And as you say, Tomás, you know, the, the society themselves are inundated, particularly now at the moment, because people are wondering, should I cocoon? Am I in that category? And as you say, the people who are answering these phone calls, they, they have to support that. We have to support that with donation. Well, exactly. I mean, look, everybody's in a similar enough situation, but if you have anybody that has a respiratory situation mm -hmm. and the talk with the COVID-19 and if you pick it up and all that, there's an awful amount of worry out there. Yeah. And they're absolutely inundated. Like some situa some uh, workforces have to keep going and keep fighting on, and these are one of them. And, you know, I suppose it, one thing that's happened throughout the COVID-19 is we see the kind of weak and vulnerable in society, and we it's easy to point them out. And the asthma are, are they're a group that do so much work for people and I suppose Cork in general I live in Cork and Cork's an area that, that has a really really high pollen count and this time of the year it is a dangerous time for them because it's unbelievable you think you're fine and next thing it comes about and Ava's doing great she's on medication in the last year she's been excellent Good. but there are people obviously that are suffering daily with it and mm -hmm. you know when the COVID-19 comes on it's like a train and you just get stressed and worried and it's not good for anyone that's for sure. Um, I was going to ask, have you done your 10,000 steps yet? But maybe you haven't because you've had your hands full. You had a, a new arrival quite recently, did you? We did. We did. Do you want to meet her? Yeah, ah, go on. Let's yeah, bring sure her in. See her. <laughs> ah, look at well, there's this Ava. Is, this is well. This is obviously isn't the baby. This no. is Ava. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was going to say, mother of God, the fine head of hair for <laughs> you. Know, yeah, <laughs> How you grow them down there? Ah, oh, there you ah, go. Look at. Introduce us. Introduce Evie. us to us. Evie. Evie, look. This is small Evie. 
And Evie, I think, lads, has really interfered with my sleeping pattern. I don't know about anybody else's. <laughs> well, she's sleeping but away I'm there. not getting as much... Yeah, she's she absolutely beautiful. <laughs> don't we all? That's... I think... <laughs> When the hairdressers open, I'm bringing her straight to the hairdressers, and we're going. Well, out, listen, it looks, it looks like she's her. looks like she's got great support around her, so you'll be all right for babysitters and people running to get bobos and changing nappies. <laughs> oh yeah, plenty of help, plenty of help. Great. Pass the bucket, they say, lads. Great, it? she's beautiful. Congratulations, <laughs> Tomas. What's your thoughts on yeah. the GA, the possibility or not of a championship behind closed doors or otherwise? Um, particularly since the comments from Leo Varadkar last night that there may be a championship or a possibility of it before the summer's out. What do you think? Yeah, well, look, we'd all love for a championship. We all need something. The GA is a part of, of society in Ireland. And we love, at this stage, you know, even in just a few weeks of what we're at, we're just starved of it. And we're rerunning old games. Look, Leo Varadkar, in my opinion, Leo Varadkar can say what he likes and the GA can say what they like and you'll go open up every newspaper, every social media outlet this morning and everybody will be positive about it. But at the at the end of the day, lads, if it's not safe, yeah. and I still, I'd love to ask, like, if you, social distancing is the issue and if you can't have social distancing when a team are actually playing against each other on the pitch... Like, July was stage four, and that was mentioned last night, and July 20th, I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I, me, personally, I can't see how you can let 30 fellas out onto a pitch going at each other as hard as they do in Gaelic football and hurling. And I, I'm hoping, beyond hope, like, I suppose the one thing is, if they're saying that stage four, July, if we keep doing what we're doing, if we stay as safe as we are, then possibly I'd be thinking, looking at maybe October, November. But that then comes down to the GAA and if they would be open to doing it that late in the year. People are hungry for a championship, there's no doubt about it. We'd all love it. But, uh, I but don't know, about, there's a bit of a sceptic in me. What about, Tomás, the, the, you know, the players' point of view? We had the likes of Sergio Aguero coming out during the week saying, you know what, we're scared. We are scared as players, as people, as fathers, brothers. We're, we're scared that we could catch it and bring it home with us. What are the players saying, our ex-players saying? Well, I mean, we're different to soccer players, guys, because <laughs> soccer players are professional. Rugby, rugby players are professional, but they can cocoon. They don't have to go to work. Correct. Like we have yeah. guys yeah. playing GAA that are on the front line. We have yeah. guys that are in GAA that their families are on the front line. So that they're coming up, you can't guarantee safety. And I was talking to Dr. Con Murphy during the week, and he's a great GA man and a great um, doctor. And he was telling me, basically, Tomas, it's not the government, it's not, it's the, it's the medical team up there, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's those guys that are going to decide, and they they will not put anybody at risk. No. And they're the guys I'd be listening to other than politicians. And then with all due respect, politicians are the GA. They, we all want society to get out. We all want yeah. the economy to start up again. But only but if it can be done until, safely. Until it's safe. Well, listen, yeah. congratulations on the new arrival and well done on the campaign for Asthma Awareness Week. We have all the details up on our social media as well. Listen, stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you soon, please, God. Thanks, Tomas. Brilliant. Thanks, lad. Thanks. All the best to you. Absolute legend. Now, still to come, he starred alongside the likes of Ian McKellen and James Corden. Actor Damien Maloney will be joining us from his gaff. And how to nab a beach bod during isolation. Former Love Islander Adam Collard will be showing us how. See you soon.